On July 7, 2002, Michael Sisko and Karen Harkness were found murdered in Karen's home in Topeka, Kansas. The case went cold for nine years. On March 22, 2012, Michael Sisko's ex-wife Dana Chandler was convicted of the double homicide without any direct evidence linking her to the crime. Oral arguments in State of Kansas versus Dana L. Chandler were held at the Kansas Supreme Court on January 27, 2016. During the hearing, the Kansas Supreme Court justices questioned lead prosecutor Jackie Spradling about her claim that Michael Sisko had been granted a protection from abuse order against the defendant, Dana L. Chandler. Uh, you'll agree that there was no protection from abuse order. I'll agree that there was no protection from abuse order. There even, was a... even, the, even though you said there was? Yes, sir. Number one, you said something that wasn't true, that there was a protection from abuse order. Number two, you said that that means that the judge agreed that the defendant was um, a danger because you'd have to, that'd be the, the foundation for entering an order for protection from abuse. And number three, you said that the defendant ignored the order. Yes, sir. And none of that's true. It is true. How is it true if there was no protection from abuse order? Yes, but there were two orders in this case, Your Honor. Okay, well, what do I need to look at? Uh, there was a protective order in October of 1998. That is different from the protective order that was originally given in 1997. Mike Sisko requested a protective order and a case manager. And the court didn't, the district court didn't give that protective order that was requested in 1998. I can tell you if I'm limited to the record on appeal, I can't, I cannot point to it. You entered into evidence the entire divorce file and there's no order in it. There is no order in it that you're exactly right. There's no, so you're, I mean, you can't say that there was an order entered because there's nowhere in evidence that an order was entered. I believe that testimony that an order was entered is also direct evidence that allows the so that would be the detective statement. Yes, sir. But the detective took it back in cross-examination and said, oh, I really don't recall whether there was an order. You'll have to look in the file that's in evidence. Yes, sir. And right. there's no order in evidence. So how do you stand up in front of a jury and tell them that a protective protection from abuse order was entered and then say that that means that the judge validated the claim and that the defendant ignored it. Well, I'm, I'm confused that uh, a month before trial, the state filed a, a 6455 motion asking to, to enter this, this evidence. Um, and it only referred to a request for an immediate restraining order in October 98. I'm, I'm curious why the state wouldn't have asked that the court uh, consider the order if there was one in fact uh, in place. I don't want to mislead this court. There is no document that I found in State's Exhibit 969, which was the divorce file. There's no document in that file that is either a protection from abuse or a protective order. So if I indicated that there was a document, I, I don't want to mislead you. I do know, speaking with the um, victim's family members, that the order existed um, and that that was discovered by Detective Boley as the lead detective in this case. 